The tomatoes are really doing well. And we met this little guy, who unfortunately has no place here. We're gonna get rid of him. Quite the treat in July. This is actually one of a handful of rainy days that we get every year. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to give everyone an update on how the homestead's doing. One question I keep getting is, how are the succulents after that first video? I know a lot of people thought that monocarpic succulent that gets its bloom cut off, once it blooms once it's gone, but we see here that's not the case. This guy's still going. That's where that original bloom was. There's another one that was right here. Let me see his neighbor. Right there. This one here. And a handful of these guys over here. So I guess pretty definitively can confirm that the succulents are doing fine even though I cut off those death blooms. And as you can see, despite my best efforts at raking and using the leaves as mulch, I guess it's just that time of year. Got tons of leaves around here on the orange. Tons of leaves down here under the grapefruit tree. There's a lemon tree and a lime tree over here. And even over here are three cherries, an apple, and a plum have all got copious amounts of mulch. And I don't know if this is the right answer or not, but I went out here by the apple that I had braced up and took some of that gardening twine and braced some of the really large branches on this Fuji. You can see here. tied up to the main branch, down to these large clumps here. Coming out earlier, counted about 50 fruit. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we keep them all. I know some people go through and do a lot of thinning and get rid of some fruit in order to help the tree out, but it's just trying so hard. I wanna see what we can do. Oh, and look at the size of this zucchini. This guy's massive. Now it might be a bit of a spoiler or a teaser, I guess, for future episode here. We went through and are planting a three sisters group, which is corn, beans, and pumpkins. Now I don't wanna give it all away. I will go into much more detail in the future, but here's the corn. You can see the beans starting to come up around them. And then back here, are a couple of pumpkin. But what really, what really grinds my gears is the fact that somebody's coming out here and munching on my corn. And you can see this guy's had quite a haircut And this guy might be completely done altogether. Could be squirrel, could be rabbit, not quite sure. Don't have a camera out here to check. So looking online and looking at the hardware store in the garden center, we found that there is a natural repellent that works for a lot of animals that is basically crushed pepper flakes, garlic, water, and a little bit of dish soap. So put that together, mixed it up real well, and let it steep in the sun all day.
This concoction's pretty easy to make. It's not expensive, but the trick is to be not washing it away. When it comes time to water in the morning. That smells like peppery garlic. <laughs> and then a little bit of dish soap is just so that it kind of sticks to the plant, I would imagine. Well, it'll either work or it won't work, <laughs> but I will be sure to let you know once, uh, you know, something happens one way or the other. Now, what I really want to talk about are these cucumbers and this little guy I found in my tomato plant. So I think we let some of these guys sit too long on the vine. Um, they ended up being this kind of yellow color, which I don't think is desirable, which is why I took it off. I was pretty impressed with this one, but hiding under the leaves were these other two huge ones. What are those? Look at them. Massive. I don't think they're supposed to get this big. These are pickling cucumbers. Like I said, we picked up from somebody that was growing them in Idaho, just the starts. I was right in the first video when I put this up, not the most sturdy of contraptions, but it's done well enough. Worst part about it is that this string is sliding down under the weight of those three big cucumbers that I took off that I showed you a second ago. This is holding up okay. Again, you can see that string work didn't hold up as well as I would like, but we will go on, it's doing okay. A couple other cucumbers starting in the back here. Little guys in here. I really want to talk about, other than this cute little pepper that's doing a really good job, look at him. He's so cute. Is this guy. Look at this friend. He's not a he's not a friend. He's not welcome here. All my research says that he does nothing but decimate tomato plants. So he's going away. Let's take a look at this guy in here. This is a tomato hornworm. You can tell because the way it is. No, you can tell because there's a horn on the end. And actually the way that I saw him was by noticing his poop. <laughs> it stands out better than he does. If you get some distance on it, the, uh, the gentleman is nigh invisible. So he's gonna go away and uh, the tomato is gonna live on to another day. See here, some of these are bad, I think. So we're gonna get rid of some of these tomatoes as well. And that marigold's not doing as well. I'm not sure why. Marigold's doing better. And this guy might be competing for resources, I think. This marigold's doing really well next to the pepper. These tomatoes are just overpowering him. I don't know, I don't know. Hey, so spoiler alert, I actually don't really know anything. I'm just trying to stay one step ahead of the audience. So I do appreciate you guys watching your patronage. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll get some more videos out here. Sheesh, that's a lot of messed up tomatoes. Bye-bye.